The Cincinnati Bengals went into Kansas City and almost, almost beat Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid on their own turf. I know we both have PTSD because we actually saw that live in the AFC Championship back a couple years ago. I was thinking that it was going to happen again today. I did not think that the Bengals would play the Chiefs this close, but, you know, I got to thinking about it, and they really always do. It's just one of those, it's two of those teams where they're just always neck and neck, no matter how good or how bad one of the other teams look throughout the season. Uh, Obviously, we only had one week of film to digest and, you know, form our opinion on, but I still think that the Bengals probably played a little bit better than the Chiefs were expecting. The Chiefs did uh, manage to put it on Butker's back like we've seen many times before, and he won the game for him, 26 to 25. I think this was um, not Patrick Mahomes' best game no, uh, by any means, and uh, I think that offensive line needs some help. I do think that if Patrick is forced to go behind this offensive line for the rest of the season, it could spell trouble for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, uh, you said a lot there. I agree with everything. I'll try to hit a couple points, and then we can just take it from there. First off, my first takeaway watching this game, this is a legit rivalry. Yeah. These, Ryan, they hate each other. Like you, you don't see this kind of game in the NFL a lot. Obviously, some division rivals are like that. You you always feel it, but you feel it with you know some some teams have rivalries like that, hey, like the Steelers and the Ravens. Did the hate start at the AFC Championship? Do you think that's when the rivalry rivalry was born? I don't think it was born after. The, I'll tell you exactly where it was born. It was really born out of all of the Bengals shit talking. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, because after losing that game, obviously that sucks, but it it still wasn't really a rivalry. It really, to me, felt like it turned when they uh, were calling it Burrowhead and were like, oh, we, mm, keep, yeah. we beat them at home three times. So that's when it really turned, and then Chiefs have beat them every time since then, but they don't like each other. Jamar Chase constantly runs his mouth. They were running their mouth this week. And by, look, Bengals are good. They're talented. Don't run your mouth. Like, well, Joe Burrow, you remember on the podcast on uh, New Heights uh, with, with Travis Kelsey, I think he told Travis that, you know, we just kind of have the team that is a nightmare for you guys. Like, yeah, w- we're a problem for you. And honestly, he's not wrong. No, but he still never. I mean, they never they can trash talk and they can beat the Chiefs in the regular season. Look, I'm a Bills fan. We tend to beat the Chiefs in the regular season. But Lord knows <laughs> right. that if the Chiefs get to the playoffs, nobody can stop them. Right, right. Man, and I, so to answer your question, it came from the shit talking. It came from the what Kansas City perceives as disrespect. And because also the Bengals know they can beat them. The Bing like Joe Burrow and the Bengals know we're really the only team that can say they've beaten Mahomes in the playoffs, you know, other than Tom yeah. Brady, and he's in the booth. So that that was my main takeaway. Holy crap, these teams hate each other. It was a rivalry game. The Chiefs are a physical football team. The the early Chiefs with Mahomes, they're gone. This is, and they have been for a while. I've been saying this particularly last year, but even the year before, with Spags and this defense, it almost feels like even this year, the defense is the heart of the Kansas City team. Like, yeah, yeah, you have Mahomes. You know what he's going to do. But the defense makes the big plays when you have to have it. Even guys you don't know, Spags gets them ready to play. The Chiefs are a physical football team. They thrive in games like this. And so many people look at the Chiefs as like a high-wire offense. You know, oh, they're going to throw it. They're still living in the old days. This is a ground and pound, wear you down, and play physical dominant defense. I thought that was a great game. I agree with you. Patrick Mahomes, actually, I would go further. I I think he played bad. I mean, he had two interceptions. One, the guy called a miraculous pass. Like, okay, give him that. The other one was just one of the worst throws I've ever seen Mahomes make. He just didn't see the linebacker sitting there. So Mahomes struggled most of the game. Thankfully, Pacheco was able to run, and the defense was able to you know, make big plays, the fumble and the scoop and score off of Joe Burrow. That was yeah, huge. Was big. And the real turning point in the game to me was the Jamar Chase penalty. When he simply got tackled by Trent McDuffie, it, they said that he was complaining, wanting it uh, a foul for a hip drop tackle. It wasn't a hip drop tackle. He didn't do his face mask. It was just a normal tackle. And Jamar Chase was frustrated. He screamed at the ref run one time. Then he screamed at the ref again. And then he kept doing it and screamed at him a third time. And even the guys in the booth with Romo, he was saying he knows that ref and he's very calm and level-headed. He's not one that's going to throw the flag for you doing that. It got to the point where Joe Burrow was having to shove him back and begging him to stop. And he would not quit. It's childish. And ultimately, it cost his team the game. It really did because it killed the drive where they could have scored and put up more points. Yeah, I hate to see that. But uh, that's, you know, I mean, the the, the heart and... The emotions just get to you in, in those games. And like you said, these teams hate each other. So 
Uh, you you tend to see these kind of kind of penalties in these really emotional games. But you can't let it what, happen, especially from one can't. of your leaders, like one you of your can't. top players. It's if it was a rookie, okay. Yeah. But Jamar Chase, you can't do that when you're driving downfield. Yeah. I know you're right, but we see it happen a lot in the NFL. Um, last question before we move on: Are you more concerned as a Chiefs fan after this performance, or are you more concerned as a Bengals fan zero and two opening the season? I'll, I'll just answer both, kind of, because okay. I, I like the way I perceive it. Not concerned at all if I'm the Chiefs. I know what the Chiefs are. Obviously, a little worried about the left tackle situation. You said the line. It's just left tackle. I don't know if I agreed with the decision to bench uh, Kingsley Suamatia. He's a rookie. Know he's going to take his lumps. He put in Morris. It's not like he did much better. I would have rather just ridden with the rookie. That's going to be an issue. We'll have to deal around that. The Isaiah Pacheco injury. That's the number one thing on my radar. If he's out for an extended period of time, the Chiefs are in trouble. They, they he's on really crutches, are. man. On I know. crutches. That's not good. No, and in a That boot. means non-weight bearing. So it's not looking good, but I think they'll be okay. Obviously, you've lost Hollywood Brown for the season. They're not going to be as good as I thought they were going to be, but they're still going to be in every game. They're well coached. They're going to be there at the end. The Bengals. If they played like this every week, I'd be fine. But look at how they played against the Patriots last week. Even Romo said it during the game. He's like, they weren't putting this kind of effort in. And I almost think that has to come down to the head coach. Some games, like when they play the Chiefs, they go out there and they play like their life is on the line and they look like one of the best teams in the league. And then they go against the Patriots and they sleepwalk through it. They can't, they they have to be more consistent. They look so lackadaisical every game they play. Like I feel like Joe Burrow's expressions of just like, he always looks kind of like a, like a very uh, type player. And in case you didn't see that because you're listening to the audio, just imagine what a face like uh, would look like and you would see that face. Or Google a picture of Joe Burrow. I feel like the whole team plays like that. I don't feel like he's an enthusiastic quarterback. I, sometimes I feel like their their feet are stuck in mud, and I just feel unexcited about the entire you know team at some points throughout any game they play. Now, yeah. like you said, if they play like this every week, we wouldn't even be talking about this. But it's the fact that they opened up against the Patriots and looked like they were, you know, a college football team. Yeah, they play down to their opponents and. The other big issue for the Bengals is... That's perfect. That's what they do, yeah. Something we've talked about a lot, their offensive scheme is not exciting. It, they, they don't use a lot of motion. They don't really try to trick you. It's just, it's a bare bones offensive scheme. And now that they don't have three-star receivers, they're a little limited. Obviously, Joe Burrow's good. They're going to move the ball and be competitive. But I, I would like to see more from the offense. I like Zach Taylor, but I do question overall what they do with the offense. But if they make the playoffs and they get against the Chiefs, anything can happen. <laughs> 